Good morning, everyone. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. And a great place to go blind. <laughs> I mean, if you've got to go blind, might as well do it in church, right? Anyway, it's good to see you all here today. And uh, as most of you know, Nancy and I were spent most of yesterday afternoon and evening in the emergency room at IU Saxony. Uh, we don't know what was going on. It appeared to be stroke, but it is not a stroke. That's really about all we know at this point. There are a couple abnormalities in blood tests, but they weren't definitive of anything. So anyway, so we'll be following up with the doctor for that. Uh, Bernadine, by the way, fell, and uh, she hit her head and has a big lump on her backside, so we'll pray for Bernadine as well. So let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we're just so thankful we can come before you in prayer. Lord, we pray that you'd be with Bernadine. We pray, Lord, that you would touch her back and touch her head and just take away all the pain that she's suffering. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with Nancy, that you would continue the healing that you've started there. In Jesus' name, amen. So, on a brighter note, can I get a witness? All righty. Hi, Ray Lynn. I think this would be a witness. Um, yesterday I was at Walmart and I had bought a 40 bottle thing of water uh -huh. and I got it in the cart, but I couldn't get it out of the cart when I went, when it was going to my car. Well, I didn't go to my car. I asked them in the Walmart if they uh, could get someone to help me get it out of the cart. And they did. Nice little kid. Anyway, uh, he walked me to the car, got it out, with, you know, just picked it up. And, and I said, um, can I give you a tip? And he goes, oh no, we're not supposed to have those. I said, well, can I give you another kind of tip? <laughs> and uh, he goes, oh, okay. And I said, uh, uh, God loves you, and you love God and love people, okay? He goes, okay. That first one, he says, not hard to do, but that second one's really hard, you know? And I said, yeah. I said, I can understand because I'm a pastor's wife, and I have trouble with that second one also sometimes. <laughs> we all do, right? And anyway, I said, just, you know, do your best, mm -hmm. and God will do the rest. I felt like that's kind yeah. of a witness, right? That is definitely a witness. Yeah, So you can God. put a one on, at least a one on your form uh, there. So. A one on this thing? Yeah. All righty, thank yeah, you. Yeah, because you witness to somebody. All right, thank you. All righty, so if you have not done so already, in your bulletins are the slips for declaring how many pounds that you've lost in the last week and how many witnesses you've had in the last week. So if you'll take care of that, we'll collect those later. And then I have some interesting information about that that we'll share later. Any other, anybody else have a witness or a prayer request? Okay. I talked with a very dear friend of mine yesterday and her daughter has stage four cancer. Oh dear. And it's spreading. And we need to keep her in our prayers. Her name is Stacy O'Neill. Stacy, and what kind of cancer was it again? Uh, it's female cancer, and it's okay. went into the bladder. Okay. And my friends already buried three children, so this oh, will no. wait for it. That's hard. Yes, she's not in good shape. So Moms we need and dads shouldn't have Burma. to bury their kids, you know. No. My grandmother, who died at 103, buried her husband <laughs> and both of her children, and outlived them by 30 years. So. My yeah. friend's in bad shape. I mean, yeah. she's handled three deaths, but I don't know. Yeah. So what's your friend's name? My friend is Burma O'Neill, and her daughter with the cancer is Stacy O'Neill. Stacy. Father God, we just pray that you'd be with Stacy right now. We pray that you would touch her body, that you would find a way to remove or cure this cancer. We pray, Lord, for her protection. And we pray, Lord, that if she doesn't know you personally, that she would come to that knowledge. We pray, too, for her mom. We pray, Lord, that she would not have to bury another child. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Anybody else? All righty. Um, I have a niece who very stupidly put a step stool on the top of the toilet and tried to clean the fan in the bathroom this week fell and broke her arm so oh no. she she needs lots of prayers from all angles mm -hmm. her name is darlene darlene father god we just pray that you'd be with darlene right now we pray lord that you would mend her broken uh, leg was it arm arm her broken arm 
And we pray, Lord, that uh, the healing would be swift and without any debilitation. We pray, Lord, for her protection. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Anybody else this morning? All righty. That was loud. <laughs> I need continued prayers for Cassie. Okay. She's home from the hospital. They still don't know what's causing all the issues. Okay. Uh, she has to go back to the hospital every day for an IV infusion. Wow. And um, that's an hour each way for them. Hmm. So my daughter's having to get up every morning and drive her wow. uh, for an hour to get her to the hospital to get that IV put in and then home. And she's feeling better. She's able to take care of her baby. And I praise God for that. Uh, but they still don't know what's wrong, and I, I, I really, really need, they need to find a solution yeah, for sure. For Cassidy. Father God, we just pray that you'd be with Cassie. Lord, we pray that you would be with the doctors, and they would be able to di diagnose what's going on and find a solution for it. We pray, Lord, for her protection, and we pray, Lord, for her healing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I got a question for you, Paula. Oh, yes. How's your daughter doing? Oh, she's all better now. Good, yeah. good. And Working. your elevator's doing better. Uh, yes, my son-in-law's worked it, and we got it going so uh, uh, I can get in and out now, yeah. and at least till the regular repairman comes. And okay, good, so good. But he's <laughs> MacGyverized it. So, yeah. there's, so the handyman's ultimate tool was used. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, duct tape. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. If, if you can't fix it with duct tape, it can't be fixed. <laughs> I'm glad you were able to get out of the house finally. Oh, me too. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, you could always jump out the window. Oh, sure. Then I'd be the one with the broken arm. Or leg. <laughs> All right. Any other prayer requests this morning? No? All righty. Then, join me, if you would, please, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Kids, if you'll come forward, we'll dismiss for junior church. Although it looks like two of the kids have already gone. <laughs> right. Hi, Cyrus. Hello. How are you doing today? Good. I can barely see you. <laughs> Hi, Ava. Is that a fox? Yeah, I think that's a fox on your shirt. Sure, what was the fox? Yeah. All right. You ready? All right. Father God, we just pray you'd be with the kids and with the teachers. We pray, Lord, that your will and your words would be done. And we pray, Lord, that the kids would come to a deeper understanding of your love. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You all are dismissed. Thanks. Have fun. <laughs> you know, Jesus said, let all the little ones come to him. And it sure is precious to see the kids, particularly a, a little, little girl named Ava. So she has such a beautiful smile. So glad to see her every time. All right, well, let's uh, do our call to worship. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 121. And it's located on page 844 of your hymnals. And if you'd like to stand, if you're able, please do so. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. The 
The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on The sun shall not smite you by day. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. The choir is going to well, do the good may be seated. The choir will come forward at this time to sing Give Thanks. Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. That's one of my favorite songs. Now we're going to celebrate our veterans. Would all of you who have served in the military service please stand up? 
going to come around to each one of you. I'd like you to tell me how long you served and where. Seven months and five days. I was at Fort Leonardwood. Okay. I tangled five machine guns and I got out. Right. <laughs> Bill? I've served in the Army from 1965 to 1967, Fort Gordon, Georgia. Okay, good. Bill? I was in the 337th General Hospital at Fort Benjamin Harrison for six years. It's a res Army Reserves is what I was in. Okay, thank you. Becky? I was in 11 years and I, um, I was, the last place I was at was Fort Irwin, California. I was in Germany, um, Virgi Arlington, Virginia, and Fort Ritchie, Maryland. What years were you in Arlington? <coughs> uh, 76 to 70, I don't know, that was a hard question. 70, right. 76 to 78. 76 to 78? No, that's not right. The reason why I ask is because I lived in Springfield, Virginia while you were in Arlington. Ah. So closer than you might have thought. <laughs> Joel? I was st in the Air Force. Okay. From uh, October 72 to October 92. Okay. I've been all over the place. Yep. A lot of people have been in for more than a little while have been a into a lot of places. David? Yeah, I joined the National Guard here in Greenfield and. 65, uh, we got activated in 68 and served in Nam 68 to 69. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for your service. And if it weren't for your service and the service of others, we possibly would not be a free country today. And so I greatly appreciate that. Eugene? Sorry, I didn't see you. That's all right. Eugene? Yeah, your eyes. Yeah, I served in the ARNG uh, for uh, six years, and it was a combat support. I served six months active duty, and within a few minutes of being called for the Bay of Pigs when, that, when uh, Cuba was under mm -hmm. attack down there. So yep. uh, that's my... Yep. All right, thank you. Thank you for your service. All right, now, how many of you have someone who is deceased that served in the military? Quite a few. I was thinking about going around and asking you about all that, but we'd be here most of the, most of the day. But, you know. World War I. World War I, wow. Now, of those that your loved one is deceased, how many of them died in service? Lorraine. And you did? My nephew died on the front row of Vietnam. Oh, wow. Wow. I bet that was a tragic loss. Oh, yeah. It was. Yeah. They still put pictures in the paper for him. Oh, good. Yeah. I like that. Young man. Lorraine? Lost a cousin, <clears throat> excuse me, lost a cousin in 70 in Nam. Um, he was a sergeant, first out of the, first out of the chopper, right onto a landmine. Wow. So um, two days later, he had his first, his first nephew was born, and a day after that, my daughter was born. So yeah. God gives, God takes away. Yes, he does. Very much so. <clears throat> now, some of you may know that my father served in the military. He served in the Army for 21 years. Uh, he served in Korea, Vietnam, uh, SHAPE headquarters in Europe, as well as in uh, Okinawa. So for all of us that have had family that have served, let's pray for the people who are serving currently, particularly those that are in mortal danger. Father God, we just pray that you would be with our servicemen that are serving right now. We pray that wherever they are, you would keep them safe. We pray especially for those that may be on the front lines of whatever conflict that is going on, whether it be in Israel, Afghanistan, or wherever. We pray, Lord, for their safety and for their return home to their loved ones. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you all for your service and for the service of your loved ones. Anybody else have any other comments you'd like to share about veterans today? Okay. My grandson is finishing up this, end of this month, his 25th year. 25 years. 
and he's going out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get but that. he's home from, he's been to all the countries and all the fights, mm -hmm. all of that Iraqi stuff. Yeah. But uh, he's, he's transitioning yeah, that's now. Good. He's in North good. Carolina now. And how old is he? He's uh, 40, how old is he? 43? 43? <laughs> 44. So he still has some 44. time to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah, he and went he out gets of a high retirement school. pension from that, too. So. He went out of high school. Mm -hmm. Very good. High school, right in. Well, tell him he, he said He loved thank you. it. He was in special forces, uh -huh. and he went to the top as far as he could go. Oh, good, good. I've known a lot of people in special forces. Yeah. So somebody else felt it. Yeah, I served as an instructor in the signal school at Fort Gordon, and I had one student from local that came through my class. That was Mike Ebert. Mike went to Vietnam and was killed, and he was a fine young man. I had the opportunity to meet his mother when the traveling wall came to Greenfield several years ago, and I was able to tell her mm -hmm. what a fine young man he was. Yeah. yeah, the traveling wall is quite a thing to see. It's even more impressive to see the actual wall in Washington, D.C. Yep. Uh, out of my three sons, I had two of them that served in the military. Um, Chris is the one that served three terms in Iraq, and if you don't believe prayer works, he had three vehicles blown up from underneath him that said everyone should have been killed. And the most he got out was a uh, concussion. So yeah. prayer works. Yeah. My father has a similar story. He served in a, as a tank commander in the Korean War, and he had three tanks blown out from under him. And being the tank commander, he was sitting up in the turret when they went over the landmines, and everybody in the tank but him in all three cases were, were killed by the landmine. Gene, I know your grandson, Jacob, is overseas. So have you heard from him lately? Um, no, he's still off the grid, as he says, you know. But he's in, uh, uh, floating around in the Mediterranean, and I guess he's just off the coast of Israel. Yep. So, so I mean, that's the last we heard anyway. Yep, yep. so he will p uh, face potential danger. Yeah, and we've been danger. praying for him for quite some time now for that. Because they've lopped, I don't know, 40-some bombs over into, to hurt the U.S. soldiers, really. Yep. But yeah. so far, nobody's been hurt, or gets been hurt, or not bad anyway. Yeah. Thanks. You know, I, I got cancer from the uh, exposure to Agent Orange and other chemicals, and mm -hmm. uh, they gave me two weeks to live in uh, 2011. And I went home and I got down on the knees beside the bed and prayed, and uh, and all the folks here had prayed. So uh, that's prayer, a marvelous story. Prayer's good. I mean, not getting the Agent Orange, but being told two weeks to live and just yeah. pray it away. Yeah. That's that was great. stunning. Yeah. Yep. So yep. I had came ill for, for a year and I'm still here. Good. Thank We're you. glad you are Praise here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, yeah. yeah. Thank you for your service. Anybody else? All righty. Now I know Jim served in the Navy. He did Navy. Um, I had listened to a newscaster this morning named Dan Bongino. He's on, I see him on Facebook. He also has a newscast on whatever that platform was that took over when all the trouble was going on. He received an email from a veteran, and that veteran described what it was like to be in service, how he had to deal with the government bureaucracy and things that went on in the camp, and it was quite heart-wrenching. So if somebody gets a chance to see that, that might be a big eye-opener. Yep. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for Jim's service as well. I'm not going to brag, but my son's a Green Beret, and <laughs> and my my uncle served in the Navy for 45 years, and he retired. He worked in submarines. <clears throat> so he couldn't have been really tall. He actually was. Oh, really? Yeah. That's got to be hard to be in a submarine and be tall. But after 45 years, uh, he retired and uh, bought himself a ranch in Montana. Ah. Can we go join him sometime? Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's got it? mountains in the background. It's beautiful. Great. But 45 years. 45 years. Yes. Thank you for his service. For thank him, actually. And my brother. Yep. 
Your brother as well? My brother was in Vietnam. Okay. And he came home, <clears throat> not only with PTSD, but he had been crushed by a tank. Mm. And um, it was a year and eight or 10 surgeries before he could walk again. Wow. And the PTSD ended up taking his life mm. because he couldn't deal with yeah. everything. Yeah, I get that. Um, Ralph and I had, a, had an aunt uh, who was our dad's sister and she was an army nurse during World War II and experienced a lot of things. I saw uh, she was on a lot of the front lines helping these soldiers. So there's lots of different facets mm -hmm. of, of how they serve. Yep. And, uh, yep, very much so. You yeah. know, some people in the front line trenches, some people as support, some people as cooks, medics, whatever. I mean, it takes, it takes a big team yeah. to work together. In fact, that's another sermon illustration you could use for today. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to announcements. I'm going to turn, no, I won't turn this off. All righty. So what's going on at Curry's Chapel Church? Well, to start with, I'm going to ask uh, Lori to give us an update. Um, everyone knows that the boxes are due today. I saw a bunch of them up there. So thank you for donating. I hope everyone prayed inside those boxes. Um, maybe after we're done, Rich can say a little mm -hmm. prayer over mm -hmm. all of them before we get them sent off tomorrow. Absolutely. Um, for the Christmas family, I guess you could say, we do have the ornaments up there. It looks great. A lot of them have already been taken. Um, I think a lot of it is yes i got some questions yes you can wrap them but please somewhere put the tag the ornament on there so we know what it is and so the parents know what it is um they do not as far as food if you're wanting to donate food they do not have a deep freezer they just have a regular refrigerator and freezer they're working on someone Someone in their family or something may have one they're trying to get from them, but right now they don't have a deep freezer, so keep that in mind. So non-perishable or small <coughs> quantity of fresh foods. Yes. Um, just pray for them. She's, I, I've talked to the mother. She's kind of having a rough time just trying to get caught up on everything. You know, when you're trying to reestablish your whole life and everything in it, it takes a toll on you. So. All right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You can get all these cards, Kroger cards, things like that, that are specifically for groceries or then just general. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something that can help them beyond this season. So that's a great idea. Yep. 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 All right. Cool. All right, so today we have Crown Point at 2 o'clock. All of you are welcome to attend. We have communion, and I wasn't expecting you to come anyway. I know you just went, ooh. <laughs> so don't, you don't have to be there, okay? You can be if you want to. All right, well, make sure you make sure I help you with getting stuff in, okay? All right, uh, tomorrow we have the uh, Medicare Educational Seminar. And I'm going to pass this around, and if you would please write down your name and the name of anybody else who's coming with you. And, no, no. Were you going to come? Okay. Gene? All right. I know you were, so if you haven't done that, and then if you just see to it that it gets passed around for me. Thanks. So, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, it's a free seminar. We'll have a uh, light meal, and uh, Bob Adams and his team will be here. Uh, Bob has been extremely helpful for Nancy and I in navigating the strange world of Medicare. And this time of year, I know you're all being bombarded by 
ads in the newspaper, ads on TV, ads on the radio, ads coming in your mailbox, and sometimes even calls. So I would encourage you to attend this if you have any questions whatsoever about your coverage, about Medicare coverage in general, or if you're planning on retiring any time in the next few years. All right, with that, then... Uh -huh. Yes, but the people on the internet do. <laughs> if anyone has any, um, I know, I think Terry had asked me Thursday night about a Christmas tree. If anyone has any old, you know, Christmas decorations or anything that you no longer need or use, if you could just give it to me. I think that it's not something they asked for, but I think it'd be nice. You know, the kids need a tree. Mm -hmm. the kids need decorations. So if you have anything extra, please just let me know. Especially if it's part of their tradition and they've lost all of their ornaments and all. So, all right. Uh, Tuesday at 6:30 we have choir practice. So if you would like to join in on that, please feel free to attend. On Wednesday we have our Bible study. We're continuing. Uh, we get to open up the well, not open up. We get to hear the seventh trumpet of the seven trumpets played coming up tomorrow. I mean on Wednesday. And then we have Harvest Dinner coming up on the 19th. That'll be a pitch-in after church. Right, and that's when we bring the groceries for the family. And then December 3rd, we have our annual meeting and Christmas dinner that will be catered. And I know Lorraine would like to say a few words about that. <laughs> a few words. Um, the Ladies Club has decided to do a church-wide cookie exchange after the meal that day um, on December the 3rd. So if you would like to participate, you do not need to let us know or anything like that. Just make some kind of cookies that's, that you're really fond of or, and you're really good at. Or you know, they, We do ask that everything be homemade, not something you went to the store and bought. And then put them in packages of four each so that everybody who's participating can have at least a taste of what you brought in. Okay? Okay. All right. Sounds good to me. Okay. Sounds yummy. Okay. And then you also want to count for reservations. I will need on those, on those, that same day of, of the, no, sorry. The 26th. The day of the harvest dinner, the 26th, I will need a head count for how many will be planning to attend the Christmas dinner. Yeah. So, but the harvest center is on the 19th, but you want your count on the 26th. Right. I want the count on the 26th, the, the day, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> I'm confused about dates without my calendar, so please excuse me. Um, but the Sunday after Thanksgiving, I will need a head count on how many will be at the catered dinner on December the 3rd. Okay? Okay. And then one other thing, while I've got the mic. Sure. The ladies' club made noodles last week. They're all gone. So we've got to make noodles again <laughs> this coming week. <laughs> um, so after church, uh, Patty, Jesse will hold a, a real short meeting with the ladies' club so that you can all can decide what day to do that. Okay? okay? All right. I think that's all I had to say. All righty. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're looking forward to the meals coming up they should be great we have uh, birthdays this month we have let's see uh, Robert Beavers and Judy's Judy you want to come forward Judy Seventy-seven. Yeah. You're ten years older than I am. I'm an old baby. <laughs> no, you're not an old lady. Yeah, I you're young. <laughs> you still got you. plenty of time to go. Yeah. You can you can go from uh, records. You can beat my grandma. How's that? Well, if I last that long, I, I'm not really wanting to live that long. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I know. 
I know your sentiments that if the Lord wants to come tomorrow, we're okay with that, right? Amen. Yep, yep. I mean, we might have some things we'd like to do, but... Oh, by the way. Ah. Alrighty. Yes. Margie, do you want to come forward or do you want me to come to you? Huh? All right. Happy birthday. Eighty-three. Eighty-three. Yep. Eighty-three years young. Yep. All right. All righty. By the way, I had asked Cindy and Jean to do something for me and forgot. They're going to come around and collect your little slips about how many pounds you lost and how many people you witnessed to this last week. And if you didn't get a chance to report last week, you can go ahead and add it on to this week's. Okay. And anniversaries, we have Eugene and Judy, and I can't read it from here, Ryan and Judy Tzell, and John and Tina Burke, and Jared and Lorraine Haggard, and Daryl and Penny Hunt would be yet this week, wouldn't it? Alrighty. So, here, why don't you come over to Eugene? We'll keep Eugene over here. Cool. You sang to each other on that. Yeah. That's wonderful. How <laughs> many you. years? Uh, Twelve. Twelve. All Twelve right. years. Yeah. Congratulations. Eleven, eleven, eleven. Eleven, eleven, eleven. Yeah, we, I, I make mention on that. We had a special wedding. It was at her home. But it's such a small wedding that our <laughs> pastor's name was Reverend Small. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's David and Carol Bradley, too. And, uh, oh, yes, David and Carol. You have an anniversary as well. Yeah. Yeah. But we did yours last week, didn't we? Yeah. All right. All righty. Well, good. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Did everybody get a chance to turn in your cards? Cards and letters or whatever? <laughs> All right. So I'll let you know about that next week. But if you'll look back over here in the corner, we have two thermometers. The thermometer on the far left is our goal of 220 pounds to lose as a congregation. We have lost, as of last Sunday, 29 pounds. That is almost 13% of the goal, and that's a great start. And then for witnessing, we had 22 witnesses recorded for last week. Uh, not last week, but the week before last. That puts us at 23% of the goal of 100. Uh, technically, I guess it'd be 22%, wouldn't it? I can't do math. <laughs> At least not on the fly. So, thank you all for that and for reporting your efforts. <clears throat> now, yesterday was a very long day for Nancy and I, so I'm just going to sit as we go through the service today. But first, we have the Star Spangled Banner on page 501 of the Worship and Song Hymnal. So that's the older of the two hymnals. Does anybody need one and doesn't have one? And this one here.
heard that. Somebody said play ball. <laughs> uh, you know, that is a common time that we hear that is just before a game starts. The Colts today are in Germany, however, so I doubt they'll hear the Star Spangled Banner today. So they did it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, good. It's nice that they did that to represent the United States. Well, let's uh, take a look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 4. I'll give you a second to find that, those of you that are looking for it. While you're looking for that, you know, I was struggling about having illustrations for this particular sermon. I actually outlined this sermon six weeks ago. And this last week has provided two illustrations for me. One illustration is about the fact of the church joining together behind Nancy and praying for her and the strength that that represents within the church. And the other is an inspirational story that I happened to see um, just accidentally found this movie, and it fits perfectly with today's sermon. So anyway, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 4. Without oxen, a stable stays clean, but you need a strong ox for a large harvest. So this is week three of our We Gather Here series. And I'd like to begin this morning by reading one of Aesop's fables. This one is called The Bundle of Sticks. A certain father had a family of sons who were forever quarreling among themselves. No words he could say did the least good, so he cast about in his mind for some very striking examples that should make them see that discord would lead them uh, to misfortune. One day, when they were quarreling and had been much more violent than usual, and each of the sons was moping in a surly manner, he asked one of them to bring him a bundle of sticks. Then, handling the bundle, he then in turn handed it to each son in turn, and he asked them to break the bundle of sticks. But through, as though each one tried their best, None of them were able to break the bundle of sticks. The father then untied the bundle and gave the sticks to his sons to break one by one. This they did very easily. (coughs) My sons, said the father, do you not see how certain it is that if you agree with each other and help each other, it will be impossible for your enemies to ignore you? But if you're divided among yourselves you'll be no stronger than a single stick in the bundle. That, you know, is a children's story. I get that. And it can be used in a lot of different ways. But today we're going to use it as an example of how the church can come together united in strength and be stronger than any one individual alone. You know, together versus being alone, we're stronger together then we are alone, and the church gathers for strength. You know, today we're going to go over several passages of Scripture. We're going to look at each one and discuss it a little bit. But to, get, to begin with, I want to share with you Proverbs chapter 14, verse 4 again. But this time, instead of from the New Living Translation, from the New International Version. Where there are no oxen, the manger is empty. But from the strength of an ox comes abundant harvests. Some translations refer to the manger as being clean and some as empty. But, you know, either way, I think what it really is trying to get across to us is that if you don't want a mess, you don't want oxen. But if you want the benefits of what the oxen can bring, guess what comes along with it? A mess in the manger. You know, and for the record, can I be honest with you for just a second? Being in community, even this community, can be messy. You know, in fact, it can get so messy that many of us who have experienced wounds and possibly even hurts even in this community realize 
that people in general are messy. We bring all kinds of troubles together and all kinds of situations that just cause strife now and again. But you know what? When you're united together in a church or in any group, you're stronger as a group than you are alone. Now I'm going to share with you the story that came out of the movie that I mentioned earlier. So earlier this week, I came across a movie that's based on a true story. It shows tremendous courage and tremendous strength. And I just think this makes a perfect illustration of what we're going to talk about today. This story is about how one woman set out to break a record that nobody else had been able to do. The story is full of incredible inspiration, loss, courage, fear, conflict, team spirit, and victory. Our story begins in 1974. A young lady by the name of Diana Nyad sets a woman's uh, record of 8 hours and 11 minutes for swimming across a 22-mile gulf at the Gulf of Naples. She did it in record time. In 1975, Diana gained national attention when she swam around the island of Manhattan, which is a 28-mile swim, and she did it in record time, breaking the previous record set 45 years earlier. In 1979, on her 30th birthday, over the course of a two-day swim from North Bimini, which is in the Bahamas, to Juneau Beach in Florida, a total of 102 miles, she set a distance record for both men and women by swimming nonstop without a wetsuit and without any protection from sharks. Now, you can see that this woman had an incredible amount of things that she accomplished. And for most of us, that would probably be more than enough, don't you think? But it wasn't for her. In 1978, she made her first attempt to swim from Havana, Cuba, which, by the way, at this point, the travel restrictions of Cuba had only been lifted for about a year. So she was going to swim from Havana, Cuba to Key West. And over two days on Sunday, August uh, 13th, from Ortegosa Beach, which is 50 miles west of Havana, she swam inside of a 20-foot by 40-foot shark protection cage. She swam for 42 hours before the team doctors decided that she was too weak to continue on. Her body had been slammed up against the walls of the swimming cage, beating her up, and she was also way off course. She had swum a total of 76 miles, but not in a straight line. So she went more like this, heading off towards Texas, as opposed to Key West. Now, that could be a pretty reasonable end to our story, couldn't it? You try something great, something that nobody's ever done before, and you give up. Not Diana. In 2010, this is 33 years after her failed attempt to swim from Cuba to Key West, she starts practicing 12 hours a day in a swimming pool for that challenge once more. She did started that in January. In July, at age 60 now, she begins training in the open ocean for what was predicted to be a 60-hour, 103-mile swim. Her second attempt occurred in 2011. And it was 33 years after her first attempt. CNN was on the boat, or on her support board, with her, following her attempt. Because nobody at this age had ever tried to swim like this. 60 years old. She didn't have a shark cage this time, but she did have sonic equipment that repelled sharks. She had a bunch of ships that went along with her in support. She stopped her attempt early, uh, two days after beginning, after 29 hours of being in the water. She had encountered strong currents, 
and winds that pushed her miles off course. So this time, not off to the west, but to the east, where she would have ended up swimming towards the Bahamas instead of Key West. Nyad suffered from a shoulder pain starting three hours into that swim. She also got stung by jellyfish, and her asthma flared up. So she gave up once again. Again. Reasonable time to quit, don't you think? You know, when you were 30 years old, you didn't make it, and now it's 60 years old, you didn't make it. Maybe it's a time to quit. Nope, nope. On September 23rd, 2011, she made her third attempt to swim from Cuba to Florida. Again, without a shark cage. She stopped after 41 hours and about 67 miles of swimming. This time because she was stung by box jellyfish. Now, most of you have probably heard, heard of the man of war jellyfish. The man of war jellyfish just makes you feel like you're on fire. Okay? Multiply that by a factor of about 10 or 20, and that's what a box jellyfish is. And, by the way, a box jellyfish sting can be deadly, whereas a man of war just makes you feel like you're going to die, but you don't. So she gave up after 67 miles, and this was in October. Again, you'd say, well, okay, let's quit. Nope, nope, nope. In August of 2012, she began her fourth attempt without, again, a protective shark cage. Her team started the swim at 12.55 a.m. on August 21st, ended the swim at 12.15 a.m. on August 21st because there had been several storms and, again, box jellyfish stings. This time, it almost killed her. But she did cover more distance this time than she had on any of the other occasions. But again, off course. So, she's already way past three strikes and you're out here. Right? Isn't it a good time to quit? Do you think she did? No, because if I wouldn't be telling the story if she had... <laughs> Her fifth attempt came in 2003. She was at now age 64, and it's 35 years beyond her first attempt. She succeeded this time in swimming from Havana, Cuba to Key West, again without a shark cage. Nyad used a protective jellyfish suit this time because of her previous encounters with the jellyfish. Smart move. And she had a mask on that made her look really strange in addition to a full protective suit. She thus became the first person, man or woman, to swim that kind of distance without the protection of a shark cage. She also completed this faster than two previous attempts that involved shark cages that had occurred 33 years and 16 years earlier. She did this in record time. Now, you might be wondering, how does this story relate to a church being stronger together than by being alone? Well, you know what? That's a good question. But here's what you don't know. On each and every single one of those uh, attempts, she was accompanied by no less than 40 support, per support personnel and her personal coach, and by the way, her personal coach had been lifelong friends with Nyad. It cost over a half a million dollars for each attempt, for all the fuel and the support and all the things that had to go into it. In addition to that, there were about a thousand people that were involved in making sure everything went well and communication was established on each of those. And then there were countless numbers of people that were watching and praying for her success. That's what it was about. You see, she admitted after she did this that she couldn't have done it without her team because she would go off on these self-righteous and self-centered tirades that the majority of us in here, if she just said that to us, no matter how long we'd been her friend, would have walked away from her and said, we're done. But no, they stuck with her. It took a team. 
It wasn't just a singular accomplishment, although it looks like that. And that's what we're talking about together about today. It's about how the church comes together as a team, how the church can be stronger by being together than any one of us can be apart. You know, Proverbs 14.4 again says, without a stable, with, uh, sorry, 14.4 says in, the, in a different version, without oxen, a stable stays clean, but you need a strong ox for a large harvest. You know what? We need a strong church for the harvesting of souls that Jesus Christ has brought us together for. We're stronger that way, but we're stronger in other ways. Now, the flip side of Proverbs chapter 4, um, Proverbs 14, 4, is that that same bunch of mex- messy oxen can bring about an incredible harvest. Get this, oxen are strong. Oxen are stubborn. Oxen are messy. Isn't that what we saw in the story of Nyad? She was strong. She was stubborn. And she was messy in her relationships. Oxen need a lot of care and direction to get through to a good harvest, just as she did. She needed a lot of care and direction. If she didn't have a support ship with her to keep her on course, who knows where she would have ended up. She probably wouldn't be alive today. You know, Jesus has chosen us to build his church, and Peter calls us living stones. We are being built into a spiritual house, and even though it's messy, Even though it's hard, there is a harvest that comes when we pool our collective strengths and we come together for the sake of the gospel. We are stronger when we work together. You will see a greater harvest when we work together, far greater than any one of us alone. You know, Phil, you remember the Gideons. If you are the only one out there witnessing... How many people do you think would come to know Jesus Christ? It's hard to say, right? But chances are you could probably count them fairly easily. But Gideon's International is a worldwide organization sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many hundreds of thousands or millions of people have come to know Christ as a result of that ministry? That's a great example of how You can come together, as messy as human beings are, for a greater good, for something that can drive forward way beyond what any one individual can do. You know, if we're alone, what benefit is it to the devil? Is there a benefit for the devil if you're alone, not together with one another? Well, get this. In 1 Peter 5, verse 8, it says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, don't you think that's an interesting analogy, calling Satan like a lion? Well, here's two things I'd like to to point out to you. First off, lions are lazy hunters. They would rather prowl around looking for the young, looking for someone who's separated or weak or hurt, and attack them than go after the entire herd. Lions want an easy target. The second point here is Peter's word choice in in verse 8. He says specifically, someone. He doesn't say the church or a small group. The devil is like a lion, and he's looking for an easy target to kill, steal, and destroy. We see that in John chapter 10, verse 10. He knows that someone that's in fellowship is harder to take astray and to capture and kill and steal and destroy than someone that's together in a congregation or in a group, as messy as we can be. Simply put, there is strength in numbers. And we've heard that since we were kids. There's nothing new about that concept. 
But when you consider how messy people can be, it's pretty incredible that the church has survived over 2,000 years and grown and expanded. And the reason why is because we have the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have the good news of the hope of Jesus Christ. And that's why we come together. That's why we're stronger together. Now, you wouldn't walk through a dark alley in downtown Indianapolis, would you? At least not without a few guns, right? Wouldn't be the wisest choice you'd ever made. But you know what, too? You don't need to travel through the valley of death alone. God's building a spiritual house. He's building a church that is there for the sole purpose of not only creating a harvest, but by making each of us stronger than we would be alone. You know, you all came together for prayer for Nancy last night. And even though we don't know what happened, we do know that there wasn't anything life-threatening, even though it appeared that way when we first went to the hospital. I thank you all for your prayers. But that's another example of how we come together. So we gather together for the strict purpose of being stronger. Like that bundle of sticks, when we're bound together, when we're in community, we can't be broken as easily if we're just a single stick. And if you've never tried that, okay, give it a try. See if you can break a bundle of five or six or more sticks. You can't all together, but you can one by one. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it reminds us of what we just talked about. But, you know, if we take a look at Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12, it says, A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Think about that. Get a string, a light string. See if you can break it. Then take that string and triple it. Wrap it around itself three times, and you'll find that it takes a lot more work to break that string, and you might not be able to break it all at all. You can even try it with thread. Thread you'll probably break at its three-branded score, but it's going to be harder. Okay? So though there are so many someones, if you will, out there that can be overpowered, two can work together. Three can work together. Four can work together. Or 42 can work together. I don't know how many we have here today. I haven't counted. Lorraine does that for me, so I'll know later. But just think, if we were a congregation of two, as opposed to a congregation of what we are now, we could be much easily broken, right? We probably wouldn't have a church structure. We wouldn't have the great fellowship we have. We wouldn't have the ability to call upon one another for prayer when things are going bad. We wouldn't have the ability to come together and touch the people that are around us that are hurting for whatever reason, whether it be the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, or whatever. We come together to provide strength. Together, we see a greater harvest. Together, we're better protected. And we are stronger together than we are apart. In closing, I'd like to share a couple of more verses. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Two people are better off than one, or they can help each other succeed. If one person fails, the other can reach out and help. But someone who fails alone is in real trouble. And actually, the word there is falls, not fails. Falls alone. So think about that. You know, an older person, perhaps, at home, falls, and they don't have the life alert thing or whatever. They can't get to a phone. But if somebody else were with them, they could be protected. You know, I know there are people here today that are down for whatever reason. They're hurting for whatever reason. Maybe they've had a string of bad luck. Maybe they've lost a loved one. Maybe they just have difficulty paying bills. Maybe you're in that situation. 
But here's the thing. Part of what it means to be strong is to know when you need to ask for help. So how can we help each other as a church? How can we lift each other up? That's the question I'd like you to think about for this week until we come back. We're stronger together than we are apart. Let's pray. Lord, give us grace to work together and the eyes to see that we are stronger together than we are apart. Let us help those around us when they need help. And let us have the wisdom and the humility to ask for help when we need it. Father, we just pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, was that helpful? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. Well, if you would please, join with me in celebrating our tithes and offerings this morning. Thank you, gentlemen. Father God, we are so thankful that we can come together before you in strength. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you have given to us and our ability to give back some to the church so that we can further your kingdom upon this church, on this this earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And before we sing America on 697, Phil gave me a hard time last week because I went until 1 o'clock. Well, it's almost 1 o'clock. But then he said, well, maybe we should change the time. (laughs) Eric, would you mind changing the time for us sometime tonight? No? (laughs) Normally, Randy would do it, but he's not here. Yeah, nobody's tall enough to reach up there. I'll take care of it. Anyway, America, page 697. All four verses. All four verses.
Today, instead of praying for ourselves as we go out, we're going to pray for these boxes as they go out. They're going to go out and they're going to touch at least 40 lives. I think there's 40 boxes there. There might be more. But they're going to go out and touch 40 lives. We don't know who those 40 lives will be or what's going to be in their particular box that is of special need or special love for that individual. I know each of you probably prayed over your boxes as you were putting them together, and I appreciate that. But let's pray corporately for the impact that this will have on these 40 kids. Father God, we just pray that you would be with these boxes as they are distributed. We pray, Lord, that each box would go to the exact perfect person for that box to go to. We pray that their lives would be impacted for you that if they don't know you already, that they would come to that saving grace. We pray, Lord, for the protection of those that receive these boxes and for the love that they will find therein. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are dismissed.